Welcome to the Musician's Gear Podcast, where we talk about all things music, gear, and various other topics. I'm your host, J.D. Jackson, and I hope you enjoy. Today we are joined by Alec Tambo. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And we are going to be talking about which also... If you aren't aware who Alec Tambo is, he is a musician, guitarist, and a music major at Utah Valley University. Uh, I guess this is final weeks for you, isn't it, right now? So yeah, just finishing up. This is the last day, and I'll be done with uh, this semester. So oh, that's exciting. I remember the stressful weeks of uh, finals week. So, but yeah, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, the importance of live music, and then just related topics to kind of just see where the discussion brings us. So. Uh, first off, I know, Alec, you went to what show was it just recently? Was it a Battle of the Bands or something like that? Yeah, I like went that? to uh, Battle of the Bands, um, and it was just last Saturday, and it was it was great. There was uh, four great bands. It was, um, I, let's see, Jordan, it was someone I'm not too familiar with, Jordan Moyes, I think is his name or something like that. Okay. Um, and then Pool House, which is I, I've heard about for a while, and then... Um, no such animal who I have a buddy, um, who plays in that. His name is JD Jackson on, he plays bass and then a band called Beeson. Okay. J- did you say his name is JD Jackson? Sorry. I said JD. I said, I said this. No, you're good. his name is JD Hamill. Hamill. Oh, I was like, Jackson. wow, we have the same name. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to change yeah, my on, name. It was on the mind. I was like, Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, so J.D. Hamill is his name. Hamill, okay. I've heard, heard of uh, Pool House for a while, and I've actually seen them before. Um, I think they do a good job, you know. Yeah. Um, and so who ended up winning that Battle um, of Bands? It was Beeson. Beeson. So that's that's led by this, uh, um, this like, she's, she's this songwriter, and her name is Jane Beeson. Jane Beeson, okay. And Jen it's become kind of a like a band now but yeah she's the one who writes most of the things i think her guitarist helps um write too and he sings helps sing some of the leads okay so but yeah very cool yeah i you were telling me about that and i i went to i've gone to a decent amount of the battle of the bands throughout the years and um i know the big one that won the big battle of bands at velour uh not that long ago i mean wasn't it cardinal bloom yeah was that was that a year ago though, or was? Yeah, that was. La- I believe oh that was goodness. the last winter one. So. I think you're right. That's crazy. Time has just been flying by. Yeah. So it was at that same battle of the bands at Valor. Yeah. Okay. And the the finalists this year, um, well, at least three of them. Like I said, I don't. I'm not too familiar with the first guy, but, um, yeah, the with uh, Beeson, No Such Animal, and Pool House, they, all competed last time too and so it was kind of oh, nice to okay. see them all in the, the finalist spot returning time, again so, yeah. to try to get the uh the winning yeah. spot so when they win i i'm not 100 percent sure like what do they get like studio time is that cash prize yeah i think there was there was a mix of things there was um it, they had like for christmas time i think there was like a stocking full of cash and then oh, nice um yeah there was some studio time and then they had like um, there was like some mixing time stuff. Yeah, like probably there was like a fr- some free mixing yeah. um, and mastering, and yeah, and then I think the the runner ups all got some sort of prize that was kind of like that, but just lesser of. Okay, of just the, lower yeah. tier yeah. prizes. Okay, that's pretty cool. And so, you you performed at Velour before, haven't you, or no? I haven't performed at Velour. I've I've played in some of the local venues around here. Um, but not not at not Valor. Valor. Yeah. yeah yeah the band the band that I was in um they just hadn't been they had been to Valor before and they just never went back when I was with them so gotcha okay yeah I've never performed there either um but I've been there a lot to see friends and you know other bands and stuff so that's like on my bucket list to do at some point just be like yeah I played at Valor you know yeah it's, I mean more than just like their open mic you know like um which I believe they do that on Wednesday nights. Yeah, I I don't know. I've I want been wanting to look into that just to go to that too, but I have not myself. So okay, yeah, I have a friend. She used to go to that. I believe she told me it was on Wednesday nights. Um, it's just like open. Whoever wants to perform a song or whatever, you can just do a kind of open mic 
night style, you know, and yeah, kind of get your foot in the door a little bit. And then if whoever's working that night was like, oh, yeah, you know, they're actually pretty good. Maybe we have them. Maybe we'll talk about having them play, you know, yeah, for a, a future concert or whatever. So yeah, and it's a great place to do that because I mean, it's Valor's pretty well known out here. So yeah, um, yeah. For those that don't know, Valor is kind of a historical uh, music venue. It's not huge, but um, it's known for having Magic Dragons, Neon Trees, and one other pretty. The Aces thing. out here. The Aces, yeah, gone. Through I there. think there's some maybe. There's a couple, a couple more, more yeah. yeah, but those are kind of, the big one is Neon Trees and Imagine and Dragons. People are like, oh, wow. So um, they, they uh, before they were famous, they started playing at the Valor and kind of, you know, made it basically have its name now a little bit. You know, I mean, obviously people knew about it here in, locally in Utah, but now outside of Utah, people are like, oh, if you come to Utah, you got to play at the Valor if you're an upcoming band, you know, um, kind of mid-tier band, I guess maybe. Yeah. It's, it's it is pretty small. I think how many people do you think you probably house in that? Like, I don't know, a couple hundred maybe, a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I'd say probably like two fifty. Yeah, I don't probably. think you could fit any more than that. There's yeah. just isn't it's, it's not big enough. So, but it's it's pretty cool. So, uh, for those that are listening outside of the state of Utah, um, if you ever want to play at a good venue in Utah, you got to play at the Belor. So, what is your experience playing in other venues uh, throughout Utah? Yeah, so I have played, let's see, I played at Third Space back when I was there. I think it's now The Rise. Yeah. And they've completely changed. Well, at least just walking, it looks, this setup is very different. Um, And then I've played at the old Rise where it was. Um, And there's a smaller place. Oh, gosh, I'm spacing on it right now. Um, it's it's in kind of close to like vineyard area and it's kind of newer. They did a battle of the mans also, and the people that used to own it um, were in a band too called uh, um, Alpine Alpine Loop. Alpine Loop. Oh yes, I've heard of them. Um, yeah, the Boardwalk. Oh, the Boardwalk. Walk, yes, uh, I remember they didn't they during COVID times like blast on facebook saying help help us start this venue or something it was something like that they were looking for donations yeah or i can't remember the whole story about that but i've been there before um i think only once or twice but it was kind of a cool interesting little space isn't it the one where you go down the stairs yeah okay and it's, I, I i personally feel like they should get a sign or something to advertise it better because i think it you know it's, it's a fun place to go to and they have a great uh green room yeah, they do. It's is that what it's called the green room? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think what, um, what it looked like when I was there. Um, they have some couches. They have some like I think they have an NES. Okay. In there and yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's kind of it's feels like an actual kind of lounge <laughs> area, so it's nice. Yeah, you know, a place that um used to they used to have a lot of music go through is the un uh it was the underground. Okay, I've heard of that. Um, and it's it's uh, pretty close to Center Street. I'm pretty sure it's on Center Street, and it's ta- it's at the Town Square area. If you know what that is. Oh, you know what? I believe it's, I've it's in actually the basement. been. Okay, I have been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't they they have it. It's kind of like an old fashioned like stand up comedy looking type of like stage. Yep. And yeah. It's like really small, but I a buddy of mine he was trying to like revamp and do concerts there again. I think it was. I don't know, a couple winters ago. And um, they have a green room and it's all like pirate themed. Oh, interesting. <laughs> they have like parrots and then like just like pirates with like, like pi- there, uh, there's like a bench, I think, that has like a pirate arm. I don't know. It, it's it's really weird. I just remember it, it being kind of cool, but it was like all pirate themed. And it reminded me of a venue up in Logan, actually, which is called, how was it called? Oh, it's called the Cash. Okay. It's kind of a newer one, and they, their green room is very pirate themed as well. You're sitting on like big things of ale, you know, like, and um, they have like the whole like pirate ship, you know, uh, steering wheel, I guess, or whatever you would call oh, yeah, it. Yeah, the, yeah. With a wheel, yeah. I don't know. Well, that, it's, it's the probably helm, different. The helm, is the that helm, what it's yeah. What, whatever. People are gonna correct us on this, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Please do um, educate us. But that's what it reminded me of, and up in Logan, there's only really like one or two places to play where i grew up and that was y sound 
Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Wise Sound. It's I've heard of it. But... So it's kind of the guy that started it, like used it more for recording purposes, but then he didn't rent it out enough or something like that, or just wanted to use it during the day when people weren't, you know, recording there, and turned it into a little like venue. And it's it's actually kind of cool. They got a lot of local art on the walls that people painted and. You can probably only hold house probably like 150 people at the most there, maybe closer to 100. But it's it's the place in Logan, you know, that's been there the longest. And it's the people that play there the most are like hardcore music, like the type okay. of music they play is hardcore or not death metal, but maybe uh, thrasher type yeah, of yeah. stuff, you know, where people usually get into some kind of uh, mosh pit stuff. For, Which is very different than velour which is very indie yeah very <laughs> at least recently very indie based so yeah and so i came from like knowing that's how that venue was growing up in logan i was like why sound i, I went with some friends that, that were girls and i remember like people just breaking out in like a mosh pit and stuff and i had to like put my hands around them so like they didn't get hurt you know and stuff and they that was like one of their first experiences in like a local live music show and they hated it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and i was like i was trying to like show them you know like oh let's go to live music and you kind of enjoy it and they kind of ruined the experience for them but that was at least the show we went to and then having now been to provo and you know going to the velour i'm like wow this is way different like yeah i mean in every venue is different but like the the kind of the vibe at the cash which is the newer venue up there and i actually know that the owner both owners names is mike which is ironic he used to be a mailman i guess for years and just he just saved he... up money and money and then eventually retired from doing that and just bought it the venue. And cool. that's what he does. And it also is a restaurant as well. Oh, that's awesome. Which is, yeah, it's super cool. They have like a Chili's licensing so they can, you can drink alcohol there, but you have to be sit, you know, sitting at your seat. Oh, okay. So, but you can have minors there as well. Obviously the minors can't be buying alcohol and drinking it, yeah. but you can have that kind of vibe where you can have older people that want to drink and then younger people that can't drink that just want to go for the music and food. That's cool. um, and I, I guess they were pretty lucky to get that because that's a hard license to get, I guess, especially in the state of Utah. Yeah. So I imagine, but it has a really nice um, sound system there. Um, it's, it's a nicer venue to play at than Y sound now, in my opinion, it's given it's been a, maybe a couple, uh, like a year since I've even seen both of them, but uh kind of a cool experience so if you ever are up that area the cash yeah. is one and then why sound is the other so i mean i think i do need to be more familiar with all because i've i think i yeah i think the farthest i played when i did play with the group was in salt lake and so okay was what was it? that in salt lake gosh was it sound well i could have been sound well it could have been the uh depot it, it could have been i don't think it was um, the depot i think it was sound well it's it was it's close to the complex Okay. Which I guess the depot is also. Yeah, but. the depot is. Um, it. What, what's the one that's like literally a garage? Like. Um, that's uh, Kilby, isn't it? No, that's not Kilby. That's, that's not Kilby. um. Uh, loading dock. Oh, the, the loading. The dock. loading okay. dock is like it looks like it's just like someone's like I don't know garage really, and because it, it it has like big doors like that, and then there there's a little stage and you can't fit many people in there, and then they have a little bit of a green room. But in, in Salt Lake, that used to be a much bigger place to go to. Okay. Um, but, like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, the loading dock, the loading dock. Like, when you're first starting out, it's a good place to play. You don't make hardly any money. Like, Yeah, I mean, it's, in general. In general, <laughs> in most playing, places, yeah, you're probably not going to make a ton. It, it depends. Well, for live mu or for original music, usually that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of playing covers, and you can make a lot yeah, of money Yeah, doing if you're that. in a party band that's yeah, where the party band. is but yeah yeah if you're doing your original stuff it's like well hopefully you, your band brought you know at least 25 people yeah <laughs> and hopefully another band brought another 25 you know to at least make like 75 people there's three bands you know but it doesn't always work out that way yeah. usually it's like the lead uh the band that's the headliner um they're the one that that brings everyone and the, the other two bands are just happy to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um but yeah the loading dock I've been there quite a few times and it's the sounds awful because it literally, it's just like a big garage. Yeah. And so they don't have any, it's not sound treated at all. And it just bounces really muddy. Um, but people in Salt Lake go crazy about that. Like if you're just like starting out, um, there's another underground in Salt Lake as well. And that one has a whole bunch of different rooms that you can like play in. And that's known for like 
like heavy metal like Okay. thrasher hardcore music screamo type of stuff you've got, you've got assigned rooms yes exactly <laughs> but you can hear you know bands down the hall it's it's kind of a cool Interesting. setup but the sound's awful in all of them okay and most of the time the bands kind of have to bring their own sound there's a i think there's one room that's like the real room and that's the one that's um has a sound system that's somewhat okay the yeah. other ones are just like super old sound systems from like the 80s and or you know someone brought their a thump t so they can hear themselves in the monitor but it just bounces off the walls because it's just like i i think they're concrete walls so it's pretty ter terrible but kind of kind of a cool place though too i don't know it's i can't remember what tickets are they're pretty cheap though like five to eight dollars Pro probably like eight dollars cool. i feel like if you do five dollars it's too cheap but it's like oh, you should just do a free show at that point to get more people <laughs> if you're doing five dollars yeah. but um yeah so there's a lot of places in utah to play um so that you said north it was you're not sure which one it was I'm, i think it was soundwell soundwell have, have you been there before yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah it's the one it's right next to a bar yeah and i think i think that's it's the one and it has like a green sign i think maybe maybe i can't remember a lot of those places in salt lake like as as far as like the, how they look outside i don't pay as much attention as i yeah. do inside just because it's like that's the experience you know um but i think i think that sounds right it's pretty close to a bar and um i've played at a lot of bars so i okay. i recognize that yeah. <laughs> right away um one of the bars in draper that's kind of a cool place to play it's it's known for like a lot of 80s rock and stuff i mean that's what i played with my cover span my cover band right yeah summer of 89 we played you know 80s pop and rock we play at leatherheads if you probably have heard of leatherheads mm -hmm. right and that's like a sports bar yeah and it's moved like a couple times in the last 40 four or five years since i've known okay. it and it they they do dj kind of stuff you know at some hours but then it, they get a lot of hair bands go through there so they had uh, the band winger go through there and we cool. saw them live and they still rock like they're old yeah um, i forget what the the winger's first name is Kip? Like, is it Kip Winger? I think it's Kip Winger, yeah. yeah. And he just, he, I don't know exactly how old he is, but I, he's like my parents' age at least, you know, maybe older, like late 50s probably. And he just, just kills it. You know, he's a bass player that sings, yeah. which is kind of interesting, uh, you know, do or I guess dynamic. Um, and then I think they only have, there are maybe two or three of the original members. And I think the drummer and the lead singer and guitar, a bass player is the only original one. Also, oh, the guitarist isn't. I don't anymore. think they're. Yeah, at least when I saw their show at Leatherheads a couple of years ago, they didn't have. It wasn't the original guitarist, so still play, was good, you know. Um, but yeah. they, they, I remember they just performance wise, I was just so surprised by these old guys. Like, um, and then uh, my buddy that was with me, they were asking if anyone played bass in the crowd, right? And he was, he's a guitar player, but he's like, well, I know enough about bass. So he raised his hand, and they pulled him up on stage, and he played, um, oh, what song is it? Ain't Talking About Love. Oh, by Van Halen? And by Van, yeah. Cool. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's it's like three chords, I think, through the whole song. It's like boom, boom, boom. Do, 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 yeah, I mean, I think it's boom, mostly boom. two. It's yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's mostly a, a two. A minor to G, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, but And then it goes to the, the three chords as well too but it's mostly the two yeah. right um but he he played that on the bass and i just remember him being so like freaking out like, and I, I i got a picture of him and like a little video of him playing up there with an old phone of mine that was at the time not very good so the video was kind of not very good quality <laughs> so i'm sure he appreciate that but it was kind of cool because like these guys were really killing it and everyone like the house was packed like people were outside and they, they probably had about 500 people that they fit in there and it's a you know it's a bar yeah. but it's like people were just like oh yeah winger you know and um but they've also gotten warrant to play there before um i don't think they've had quiet riot but i've seen quiet riot play live um in 2017 that um gary robinson he put on a music con in salt lake at the salt uh salt palace and he had us play on one of the stages he had like an acoustic stage a rock stage 
and then the headliners that were playing like at the end of music con they had booths of all sorts of music actually if you look right behind you that's my artist pass for music con all right on. so it kind of cool i've kept that as a memento just because it was it was a cool experience i kind of wish that they would do it again um i'll have to ask i'll bring it up to gary and be like gary just do it in provo do it in provo because <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. cool um but yeah we uh played right before um autograph okay played and then uh quite right was like the main uh headliners and stuff Autograph, they did a super good job. I mean, the the, the song that most people know by them is, uh, is turn up, the yeah, radio. turn up the radio. You know, yep. Uh, there was one other hit that's pretty good too, but it sounds pretty similar. Okay. <laughs> you know, they're kind of like a, they were known, you know, in the the eighties and stuff, but they were more like a one hit kind of wonder type of band. You know, like they're not as big as Death Leopard or Poison. Yeah. You know, any of those other bands, but they that hit did really well, so they became really famous and popular from that and before the show i was at a booth and i didn't know this but the the guitarist and the singer was there just looking through booths and i didn't know it was them and i was just like bu buying something and then he just started joking around with me i was like oh yeah and i just started talking to him so, like the nicest guy ever you you know but he looked like he he was weathered from the 80s and like rock and roll so i was like hmm, i wonder you know what his story is and then they, later I saw him up on stage. I was like, what? And he was just like walking around super chill. And like, that's cool. Yeah. I remember that was, that was, uh, I was kind of geeking out about that later. Um, not everyone in the band thought it was as cool as I did. And a couple, like in the, the other singer in my band. Really? But yeah, I can't remember who, someone was like, oh, it's not a big deal. I can't remember who it was. But um, also Billy Dean was, they had like a country stage and mm -hmm. Billy Dean was the, uh, the headliner for that. Do you know who Billy Dean is? Um, yes, I, I will. I couldn't name anything, but yes. I yeah, you, you've probably heard name. of his name yeah. and stuff. I mean, if you don't listen to that music too, it's kind of like, well. Yeah. Well, and I know I've heard his songs. I just wouldn't be able to, to tell get, you. To, yeah, like, oh, oh yeah, I've like, heard this song. Yeah. And I'm not as familiar with all of his songs either, but I remember my parents were pretty excited about that because they got VIP passes to that music con thing. And my mom was like, oh yeah, I love Billy Dean. And so she went and saw him and, they got to meet him and um he actually signed a couple of things for my parents which was kind of cool and it's cool after the whole show was done a couple of people just walked up to him and someone was like admiring his guitar it's like you want to play it and it's like it was a really expensive you know martin guitar acoustic electric and he's like oh yeah sure you know oh, cool. some guy just started playing and he was just like shooting the shiz you know with us and i'm just yeah. like you know that's pretty cool because he he is pretty famous you know he i remember I don't know. I was in high school still, but he would go to the high school and do like a big assembly concert, you know, just for free because he's just a nice guy and super yeah. down to earth. And he's like one of the real country artists still out there, you know, that's like just down to earth and just, I don't know, isn't all about the fame, I guess is what okay. I'm saying. Uh, I can't, I don't know how I got on that tangent, but it, it was, I think it was just interacting with. Oh, the yeah. artists and stuff. Which I I think is a good point because you were able to meet. It was the autograph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's usually a big deal when the bands are willing to be out there with the audience or maybe watching another group or something like that. Because there was a group. So I I'm a big fan of this band called Ripe. Okay. And I saw them with my brother a couple of years ago, and um, I just remember turning around in the. Um, their guitarist one of their guitarists at the time well they now just have one but they had two at the time and one of them and uh the lead singer um were just out in the crowd dancing to the band that was playing before them oh that's uh, awesome i think it was this band called waker and uh it was fun i just turned around and we're like oh they're right next to us just yeah having along. a good time yeah and so i thought that was fun and i, I just think it's important for artists when they like are willing to interact you know and uh yeah. be a part of it and not just you know it hold himself to a higher level like yeah. oh i'm too good i'm the headliner or whatever i yes. don't need to see the other bands yeah and i understand like if they're like a really big band it's just probably a little bit of safety yeah <laughs> to be in the part of the crowd people jumping them and yeah yeah but um i think you know for smaller you know venues and stuff i think that's i know should be the uh the standard is or at least it's just nice to see when people yeah. are interacting so well just super like 
I don't know, down to earth kind of real artists. Like they don't get this ego no matter what level they're at. Yeah. So um, I can't I can't think of like a good example at the top of my head, but um, the lead singer of Quiet Riot, um, which actually now the only original member of the band is the drummer, um, which is kind of interesting. But the lead singer, he was a younger guy when I saw him a couple of years ago. And the band, like a lot of people wanted like, you know, interact with the band afterwards, the people that had VIP passes and stuff. And they just like left. They didn't like talk to anyone. They were just like, screw this type of, you know, that that's huh. their attitude that they had. And, but the drummer stayed and just sat there and just talked to people. And then, cool. Um, Cause he played with uh, Randy Rhodes for a while too. And a buddy of mine, uh, Blake, he's a big Randy Rhodes that's his idol as a, as a guitarist, right? And so he was geeking out with him. He was like, "So how you know how was it to play with Randy and stuff?" And um, he was just like, "Oh, was, you know, just super down to earth." He's like, "Oh, Randy was like one of the best people I ever met, you know, and just like super d- d- down to earth." And he was just as he was cleaning up his drum set, you know, and behind you know back behind this barrier where the VIP people were allowed. And I just remember that I was like, you know what, this guy. He's the only original member, but he's the only one that's not acting like he's above everyone, you know? Which is interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's like, hmm, interesting. Because the other guys were younger. And I remember the lead guitar player was doing some kind of solo. And it was just a chromatic, very chromatic, just do 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 You know, nothing to, it was, it was, but he kept doing that over and over again. And then he was like, come on, you effers, you know, like, get excited about this. And I'm just like. Well, it's, play something interesting. Yeah, play, well, that's what I was thinking. I was in the crowd. I was just like, I just it isn't interesting enough. You know, it's just the same thing over and over again. Yeah, you're doing it fast, you know, and everything, but it's like just a chromatic scale over and over again, isn't very pleasant. Like, yeah. it has its place, right? But like, if you're just doing it over and over again, and I just remember his attitude was just like, you just swear to everyone, like, you know, come on, you cheer, you know, and everything. People were war cheering for a little bit, but then he kept just doing that over again. We're just like, okay, it's lost its <laughs> what novelty, I guess, you yeah. know. And anyway, I just remember his attitude, the, the, the guitar player, and then the lead singer. He was a younger guy, and he just like booked it out there, didn't want to talk to anyone, and maybe he was on drugs. I don't know, probably. Yeah. But it was just like. And I remember the drummer. I was just like, oh, man, that guy was so cool. Like, I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, which I feel bad. But um, yeah, sadly, I, I know a few of the people. I mean, I remember the names of a few people, but I can't remember the drummer. I can't remember the bass because I think the bass player passed away. I think the singer passed away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like Carlos Cavazo. I can't remember his last name. Cavazo, something like that. Some, yeah, I, I can't pronounce it. I think he played with rap for a little bit. Yeah, it's oh, a... and the rat. That, have you seen a video of rat? It came out, I think it was 2016, 2015. They were playing live, I think, in Vegas. And the lead singer had crossfaded with alcohol and medica- like prescription like medication. Things, yeah. And he had put on a lot of weight and stuff and had some health issues up to this point. But like on stage, he, he it looked like he was having a stroke. He was slurring and his voice, he was like, I, 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 yeah, it, a lot... <laughs> They felt bad. They, I think they refunded a lot of the people that went to that show, their tickets and everything. But And most of the hardcore fans were like, you know, just get better or whatever. But here's the thing. He did that to himself intentionally too. So I'm also kind of like, I'll give you sympathy a little bit. But he knew what he was doing. But you yeah. knew what you were doing. And so like, it's unfortunate. I, I think he's doing a lot better now. But another artist kind of during that time frame was um, well, Axel. He put on a lot of weight, you know. Yeah. So... And I, but he's playing again. Um, isn't he singing for ACDC? Axel Rose? Yeah, I thought he was playing for ACDC. I, I haven't heard that, but I don't, I don't know. Okay, I know he's still. I mean, he still does stuff for Guns N' Roses, but Brian Johnson no longer sings for ACDC. And so I was like, I, I, at least I heard a rumor of that. I don't know if it actually happened. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I didn't. So I'll, I'll have to too, but I just remember like hearing like Axl Rose singing in for ACDC. I'm like, I guess they don't have that many singers nowadays that can really do what those guys did, you know, as far as like the range and the power and the style, you know, like it's kind of hard to do. Yeah. It, it really sucks when, um, when artists to, and this kind of, you know, aside from that topic, but like when over time they don't take care of their, you know, their voices or, yeah. or, you know, just, or maybe their guitar playing. And then you can tell there's a huge difference. Um, 
I don't know if you ever listened to The Cult. Uh, a little bit. Like Firewoman. Yeah. Not, um, not very. I'm not super familiar with The Cult. Yeah, because I, I thought that lead singer, I can I don't know his name, um, but I thought he had an awesome voice. And then I saw like a more recent live thing and he could just not hold the notes very well. And yeah. It's, I mean, it, it happens sucks. with age, but yeah. also if you don't practice it, you know. And There are also people that are able to, you know, hold on to that yeah. if they, you know, take care of it. So. Uh, yeah, what's a good singer that can do that? Well, I, not a singer, but a good guitar player would be Slash. Slash, like, he, he he's not as good as he once was, but he still can play, I guess. I, I mean, I, f- I do feel like over time, maybe he hasn't practiced as much. And no, so probably not. It's definitely kind of shows um but i think yeah they're d- definitely guitar players that like still obviously practice very hard and then they can still keep up you know uh, yeah and I, who was it is it um zach wild isn't zach wild still like from what i've seen of videos of him playing live at concert it looks like he's still got it I, yeah i think he so. still got it when when eddie was alive i think eddie kept it up pretty good yeah um at least his guitar playing there's definitely some health issues but yeah yeah he would he was always on top of that i'm trying to think who else so someone that i feel like has kind of gone downhill is i, I don't know if you've listened to much of the allman brothers but dickie betts i mean oh. he's really old yeah but you know i you can definitely tell the kind of struggles with some timing stuff now um let's see who i'm trying to think who Else. Yeah, a good Same. example of someone I, that's. I think all the guys in the Scorpions have kept up their, at least all the original guys that are still there, they've kept it up pretty well. I saw them, at least when I saw them a couple few years back, it was probably like, I mean, this is still like maybe like almost ten years ago, but um, I saw them live with my dad, and they were moving around stage still. They were in their sixties. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I think some of them <laughs> might even be in their seventies now. Oh, but, uh, that's um, that's amazing. Yeah, but they were still moving around, and they were able to play. Yeah, that that singer, he Klaus has been able to uh, keep up his. I mean, even if it was ten years ago, he was in his sixties, and he's still sounding great. So yeah, well, that's something to strive for, right? To be yeah. that old and still be like, yeah, that guy has still got it. Like, yep. But I think you have to have it to still. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. That's what I tell myself. I'm like, well, I gotta get to that point first, and then just <laughs> you have to at least have it once to keep it. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> thing well i mean kind of maybe steering now a little bit more towards like the importance of live music we've been talking a lot about these performers and artists that you know had kind of been going downhill over time but also you know still some of that have kept it um in my last uh podcast i was talking about like the power of music and how there's a lot of research done that people that have like alzheimer's or dementia and they lose motor function if they listen to music at least when the music's playing, their motor function comes back. And so I think, because overall, most people that are really, you know, were big performers that didn't get into the drugs, like Kiss still plays, right? Like, yeah. they do they do pretty well. So they're not as good as they once were, but they still put on a pretty good show. Yeah, and I, th- I think the thing about Kiss is it wasn't necessarily that they were always these huge, you know, big virtuoso players, but they were just really good performers. And yeah. just kept that up. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, was, the makeup and everything yeah. and the... Outfits. and they can still play but yeah like I, I think they are still able to you know hold on to what they were yeah so. they, they, they never strayed from that yeah for sure um but well, where was i going with that oh um the health their health right there's a lot of people that you know as they age their health just goes down but a lot of musicians as long as they keep you know taking care of themselves practicing their craft and stuff i don't know if it's just because they're around the music and stuff but their health seems to stay in a better shape for a longer period of time than someone that, you know, wasn't, you know, exercising on stage, performing and playing instruments. And, you know, I don't know, maybe yeah, 100%. that's percent. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it's hard to compare apples and oranges because not everyone is an, a performer and a, you know, a musician, but then, you know, the people that are, it's hard to just like, cause you know, obviously people have health elements in their family, you know, where their genes and, ancestors that you know have the bad heart you know even if they are performing that's still going to affect them right but i would like to say overall just kind of going back to my point of like the studies have done with music and motor functions and stuff it, it seems like artists that are older that continue to play 
it seems like they stay younger longer kind of i don't know does, does that would you agree with that or disagree with that i i mean i think the people that are yeah that are active but i think outside of even their playing it's obvious that they you know have to take care of themselves to be able yeah. to do the things that they do on stage still and so um but yeah no i'd, I'd say the ones that are still healthily moving or just moving around stage and keep it up um and do what it takes to be able to keep that up outside of that yeah 100 percent, they are you know healthy people because it does take a lot to you know i don't think people realize how much uh, effort it, and how tiring it can be if you are running around you know i don't even oh, run yeah. around on stage like those guys i can't even imagine um uh, like doing backflips and stuff yeah and like i oh, I think it was the uh, the band Creed. Okay. No, no, not Creed. Disturbed. Okay, yeah, yeah. The lead singer, I think he would do backflips and stuff, and that's wild, yeah. And it's just like, I, that's just too much. But like, <laughs> I mean, if you can do it, cool. I can't do a backflip, but like, if you can, I guess. But that would just, I, that'd be sketchy. Like when you're like all like, you know, all this adrenaline and stuff, and you're like tired from playing, you know, a long show, and you got all these people out here. What if you mess up on your, oh, yeah. you know, your backflip? I'm a clumsy person, so I'm always afraid. Like, man, if I try to do that move, like, um, Matthias from the Scorpions, he um, would do like a jumping split in yeah. the air, and I'm like, I would hurt myself jumping oh, yeah. off the stage doing that and trying to land it while playing guitar and yeah. trying to keep it and not destroy your guitar and wreck yourself. Yeah, yeah, and still trying to play in time and write notes. So yeah that the, all that kind of stuff yeah so backflip i'm not there yet <laughs> but practicing you'll get there right yeah, Is that yeah, what if, if that's yeah if that's what i choose to practice hopefully yeah 2023 alec <laughs> learns to do backflip while playing guitar yeah. and <laughs> man that that's just too much but but you remember those shows right because that's why yeah. they can sell these the you know these amphitheaters where you're just like dang these guys are not just great musicians they're great performers going back to kind of kiss right that's why they've been able to stay relevant, I guess. It's, no one does really what they do to the kind of caliber that they do it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's always people that dress up as a, I don't know what the word is, but as some kind of, man, I can't think of it right now, but like a, not a commodity, I guess. Maybe that's not quite the word I'm looking their, for. Uh, their musical identity? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I mean pop artists do it all the time too like they you know go a little crazy with their outfits and mm. you know yeah yeah. It, it, yeah i guess their musical identity might be the, what i'm looking for but um yeah not everyone does that like kiss right like yeah. with the full makeup and uh, i mean uh i guess the closest one i can think of off the top of my head i know there's other ones that did do fit full face but is um twisted sister they put on i mean oh yeah d snyder he put a lot of makeup on like a lot of like eyeshadow and lip, especially lipstick, mm -hmm. and he like would put on very stuff. terribly too. Just, blah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, they're called Twisted Sisters, so I mean, like, yeah, you know, it kind of works for their image, but uh, I guess image is maybe <laughs> what I was looking for. Um, oh, wh where was I going to go with that? Kind of anchor off of that. Oh yeah, just the importance of live music. So, um. So we've been talking about these artists playing live music, um, helping them maybe stay younger, longer, if you will, right? Yeah. And better health because you got to take care of your physical health, but also your mental health. I think they just don't get complacent. Like maybe a lot of people as they start to age, it's like, well, I've worked a hard life. I have grandkids now. Like I don't need to do these things. I'll just enjoy the rest of the end of my life, right? And then these artists that like it's their career and they play until they can't anymore and then they die yeah like that's what david bowie did like david bowie was playing as much as he could and you know, writing as much as he could and then like the last song he released um what was it called it's a lot no it's not labyrinth it's um oh man and this is good i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm kicking sure. myself for this one but uh i was in college when he passed away and he had released this song basically talking about him dying interesting and the music video is very interesting and he's like in a hospital bed and he had, has like some weird things on his eyes and he's being David Bowie, you know, and um, it basically is talking about himself like dying and decaying. And then two weeks later after that, after that was released, he dies. Like if that's not yeah. like, yeah, that's crazy. That's he, he just knew it was probably happening. And so up until that point, you know, he was doing all this work. I think 
doctors probably gave him a good estimate of probably how much time he had left. But up until the last day of him being alive, he's releasing music and music videos, and then he just like passes away. It's yeah. kind of legendary, really. <laughs> so, I'm, and I'm sure that was on his mind. He's probably like, yeah, I'm probably getting close or something. Yeah, or he's feeling. That. I don't know. I'm That's gonna crazy. have to look up that song, and I'll I'll send it to you. But sure, it's yeah. it's a good one. I think it was 2018. I think it was 2018 when he passed away. I think that sounds yeah, right. Yeah, it was either that or 2019. Yeah, it was either the. Yeah, so I think he died the same, at least pretty close to when Prince died, and so I don't know. Yeah, I think Prince was a little bit after that, yeah. if I, I think remember they were right. Either within the same, in the same year or within the same span of a year. Or so. Yeah, that was a bad year for artists passing yeah. away. Because I really like David Bowie. My favorite song by him is "The Man Who Sold the World." And then, you know, Nirvana does a cover of that MTV Unplugged. I don't know if you... I haven't seen that one, but yeah. Okay. So that's... I mean, I've, I've seen, seen some that, of the MTV yeah. Unplugged, but yeah. I just... It's it's really cool. And like, instead of the vocal part that he does in the bridge that Bowie does, mm-hmm. they do that as the guitar solo. Okay. And it's just a couple of notes, but like, it's just really cool. I don't know. It's just, And then if you like Nirvana, it's kind of like a grungy version of David Bowie's song. And sure, you're just yeah, like, yeah. okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I think going along with that and to kind of uh, get onto the point of, of, like you were saying, of live music, um, when you do stuff like, you know, um, Kurt Cobain did where he did a cover of something and, and made it more grungy, I, um, and I've, I've kind of mentioned this to you before, but like, I think with live music in general, because it's so different, at least it feels to me because it's so um, artist oriented nowadays. Yeah. Um, as opposed to to band and like and it's very tracked and like a lot of it is you know based on tracks which is great um you know using that technology but i i think I, i've talked to a lot of friends recently um that they're like oh yeah that you know i've been to live shows and i just don't see the purpose of it because it feels like they're probably doing the same thing every night oh and, yeah and there's not much difference in that and i, I think the novelty or just the 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 thing of interest with live shows at least for me when i watch those old things those old shows is like stuff like kurt cobain maybe doing a different rendition of your favorite song or or a song that you've heard before and maybe making you maybe you feel like it's better or um groups that um have a little more i I feel like there's a lot because of the tracking stuff there's a lot less improvisation and already it's not very focused on the band nowadays it's focused on the you know the lead vocalist yeah um and so for me and and i i hope that we're able to get back to this in in, in music is you know with live music i i hope that we there starts to be a little more um focus on really giving people a different show you know than that they would hear on the album because right now yeah. it's so focused on making it sound exactly like they heard it you know when they you know listen to it on yeah Yeah. listen to it apple music or spotify and they're like oh i want to hear that same exact thing live but there was such something special about when you heard something live and it still was really good but they played it a little bit different yeah and you're like oh that you know that was a a special experience because that you're probably and they maybe didn't do that ever again yeah they which made it kind of interesting and special um one of my favorite bands to listen to right now is this group called goose and it's their jam band. Okay. Yeah. And um, they do a lot of all. They have a ton of originals, but they also do a lot of covers. They're obviously very, you know, influenced by like Fish and Grateful Dead and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, they do different stuff every night. One of my favorite concerts is this one where the guy who normally plays like rhythm guitar and like keyboards, he takes like a guitar solo oh. in a song he no- doesn't normally. Yeah. And um, he goes off. Yeah. On it, and it's it sounded great and um and they've have not done that since <laughs> and oh, wow. so i'm like that's really cool so I, and they have you know a streaming a live streaming platform it's i think nugs is what it's called nugs oh. and um i yeah I'll, I'll listen to that occasionally because i'm like this is the only time they've ever done that but yeah i i think with live music there's something special when you can go to a live concert and not know what to expect yeah and I, I feel like nowadays that doesn't happen too often. You you have an expectation of it to sound a certain way, but back then you used to be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you know, be like, 
You're like, and, oh wow, this is different. Like, I wonder okay. what they're gonna, you know, yeah. what what they're gonna play tonight. So, um, and like I said, I I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that we have tracking now and um and that they're using all this and and that they want to make show that they can make it sound the same live. But I think yeah. there was a little bit more you improv, know, improv, or yeah. yeah, just a little bit something a little bit different. You know, each night I think that would be uh something that would help um, connect the importance of live music to more younger audiences. I would agree. Yeah. And I mean, because when I was playing with my party band a lot, um, we would have a set list, right? That we, I mean, we, we could play about five hours of music, which is a lot of music. Yeah. And so we'd play at casinos. You would play for 45 minutes, take a short break, like, you know, 10, 15 minutes, play for another 45 minutes over and over. And we'd have like five or six different set lists you know, for those 45 minutes. But then we would just like, we after playing at many bars and playing for three or four hours and do that, we would just improv and be like, who knows this song? And we would just play that, you know, and sometimes it would work out. Sometimes it would be a complete wreck. <laughs> but we would tell people, be like, we've never played a song before. Here it goes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we've played, uh, one that we pull out of, you know, out of nowhere sometimes is uh, Johnny Be Good, right? Yeah. Like, not really the style of music it's rock and roll but like it's not 80s rock and pop right yeah or we'd pull in like girls just want to have fun or occasionally too do 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 do. you know and sometimes the, the form is kind of weird actually on that song but um so sometimes it would sound good and sometimes it sounded like wreck or we'd pull out september actually <laughs> by <laughs> earth <laughs> and it you know it would people would love it though sometimes so it's just like wow and we would have fun because it would it's not the exact same thing every time we would sometimes just pull these random songs i, I wrote a couple original songs for the band as well uh you and me for steel badger that was our name before summer of 89 and then uh, we had fierce as a badger that was our anthem song uh <laughs> you know because we were all badgers you know from snow college and from utah was was that inspired by steel panther at all or um <laughs> I, mean, it's totally I, I played the fi- I played the fifth on that one, <laughs> but we we were, when we were coming up with the name for it, we all just threw in name ideas, and that that's what we came up with. Still Badger, cool. Um, and then I think someone mentioned it later. Isn't that a lot like Steel Panther? <laughs> and we're all like, "Oh crap, I guess so." And then we're like, "Should we worry about it?" We're like, "Nah." <laughs> so, I mean. It, it was it, a happy coincidence. A happy coincidence, yeah, because like I didn't even think about it until later when someone mentioned it in the band. We're all like, huh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but it's, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. It, even when you like, you're like, come up with a creative song, you're like, oh, this is a cool song, name an idea. No one's probably ever written this. And then you listen on the radio or you listen to music one day and you're just like, crap, that sounds a lot like this song. <laughs> or like it's the same name as the song or whatever, but it's like way different still. You're like, oh, I thought this was an original idea. Like, I was talking about a tidal wave, but I guess, you know, like, or uh, I don't know, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and you're like, well, I guess it's not original, but it just, <laughs> because there is so much music out there nowadays, you know, that everyone can listen to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it is important, like you were saying, for people to go to live music to see those different um, experiences. And you, it's kind of the band's fault just as much as it is the audience's fault because they're like, all right, here's our set list. This is exactly what we do. We say this exact oh, yeah. same joke right after this song, you know? And I think bands, it, it's a good place to start if you don't know what to do on stage. Like make sure yeah. that you're working on your performance aspect. But if you do the exact same thing, what if you have fans, like you get bigger and bigger and fans are falling from city to city. Then they're just kind of like, well, this what's is... the point of going to the next city if it's yeah. the same thing I did? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and, and they didn't do that really. I mean, they did some bands, you know, in the 80s, because that's what we've been talking about a lot. In the 90s, they did that a little bit. Yeah. I don't feel like they do it, did it as much as bands nowadays, like, kind of to your point. Because I, I, I'll go see live artists, you know, and I'll be like, okay, you know, so they're buddies of mine. And I'm like, let's see what they do, you know, and... If it's the exact same thing, I'm like less inclined to want to go back again because I'm like, well, I've already seen this show three or four times. Like, you guys are good and you've gotten a little bit better over time, but like, and and you played one song different. And you yeah. To play. <laughs> yeah. And, but like then they, but then the bands that like change it up, um, I mean, my friends in Cardinal Bloom, they'll, they'll they're pretty good at that. I feel like they'll throw out these random songs they haven't played or like a brand new song you know haven't done, and and that show is unique. Yeah. All of a sudden now you're like, oh. 
cool, you did a really cool version of this song or, you know, occasionally they'll pull out like smells like teen spirit. Right. But they don't do that all the time because one that's people play that song all the time. So it loses its commodity as a show or as a song in your set list. Right. You do it too much. Like it's good to have your, your form of what you normally do, but then like have things you can, you know, improv a little bit Mm -hmm. because maybe it's just like, and this is something we would have to do, like our lead guitar player, his either he'd have issues sometimes with his pedal. Like we he randomly lost power once and his whole um, guitar, you know, went through that. He didn't have a, an amp. His amp simulation was through his pedal. And we're like, oh, crap, what do we do? And so we just started like doing a little jam. The drummer started doing like a little, you know, rhythm and stuff. And then we just started jamming for a little bit. And then eventually he fixed it. And it just, he seamlessly just came in, started doing some lead stuff. Yeah. And then we just like, you know, ended the little jam and then went straight into a song right after that, you know? Yeah. And people were like, oh, that was kind of cool. Like, you know, because it wasn't expected really, you know? I mean, and you have to do that in live settings. Sometimes your guitar string breaks. You're like, crap, I got to yeah. go get my backup guitar now or whatever. And I will say that's probably like the benefit of, you know, being a huge, you know, world known band because yeah. during those, then you like those instances, you have a guitar tech that can switch it right away. So you don't have to really deal with that. Yeah. One. So, I mean, th- that's something to be desired from that sense. But yeah, no, I, I've had to do that too. Or, yeah. you yeah. know, something happens where the, or the, the another guitar player is having to tune so we'll jam a little bit during it yeah so you just thought the awkward silence because that's what you don't want is everyone just stand on stage like <laughs> are you gonna hurry up jimmy yeah <laughs> you know kind of thing yeah so. at least something to engage in the crowd keep them yeah whether that's talking to them or yeah it's or giving us a story about something yeah i think the thing that bands aren't as good as with as well and some are but is getting the crowd involved with a song. Like the really good bands are, or performers like that have gone to live music. They're like, all right, on this next song, we need your guys' help. So I'm going to teach you the, the, you know, the chorus. Yeah. All right. Can you sing this? Uh, da, you know, whatever they do that. They're like, all right, I'm going to point to you guys when you, you know, and then they play the song, they get to chorus, do that. And then everyone's singing along. That's a lot funner experience. Like, I, can't, I mean, you don't want to do that too much. Cause then it seems like you're, begging the audience to like participate a little bit yeah especially if they aren't responsive then that's like the wrong thing to do probably but yeah you definitely have to yeah. kind of gauge but yeah, yeah you're like oh these guys are these are fun you know like let's have let's give them something to do on this next song you know well and i, I have to admit like i've made that mistake before too like there was this one concert where i had a lot of people that i knew or that people that were a lot a lot of people that were fans of the group that i was playing with winter sirens yeah um, and I did this once, so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do it again. But the, one time I went, because I have a wireless, you know, guitar setup. Yeah. So I w- walked into the crowd, and it was great. Yeah. And then I did it at another concert, and you could tell that the like, crowd was like, what is this guy doing? Yeah, like, get back up on stage. Which, I mean, which was a good learning experience, you know. Yeah. Being like, okay, definitely kind of engage the crowd and, yeah. and see where they are and, and not try to force them to. Uh, Accept what you're doing all the yeah. time. Yeah. And, um because sometimes do bands do do that and, and try to, to force it and then like try to make it seem like, yeah, you should be dancing to our music because it's so great yeah. rather than really getting them into it. So I, I feel like at that battle of the bands I went to that most of the bands did a really good job at finding a, a way there was sometimes felt a little forced, but yeah, there was a more, I think more so times where um, they were able to get people engaged in a kind of a natural way. It was all, it's like, the audience was already trying to figure out what they should do to the music and then they gave them they got an opportunity it, so. yeah i i to your point about playing in in the crowd though i've been there before too so i've done gone out in the crowd and like thinking everyone's going to be like super happy you know excited <laughs> and sometimes you're just like what's going on or they're confused Have, there's sometimes people are like well, how is he pl- what like, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to connect, yeah. like is he actually even playing now you're like is this a track yeah <laughs> yeah you know and I've, I've had people one guy after he was at a bar and he was like were you actually playing? He's like, then how, how are you in the crowd? I was like, oh, it's a wireless rig. He's like, I mean, he was pretty drunk to be fair, but he was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, he, it was mind blowing for him. He was a little bit older guy too. Yeah, yeah. But at the Big Summer Bash 2019, I think it was, um, at, you, you know, are you familiar with the, with the Big Summer Bash is? Uh, I'm not actually. Okay, so... Uh, the tribe is a company that puts on big dance parties and events and corporate things. Okay. Um, I, I'm good friends with the uh, the lead singer, not the lead singer, the 
um, owner. The own, I knew both of the owners before the, the, they kind of broke off their partnership and one started in another company. Okay. Uh, Eric Little is the owner's name, and uh, we've gone to a lot of his festivals to play shows and help out with sound and different things like that. Super cool guy. Um, but he would have us play at the Big Summer Bash, which they would do every summer in like July time um, at the Town Center Mall in Provo. So uh, they would have a carnival, like in big like rides and stuff over there. And then they'd have like a, ba- a big stage for bands and artists to sing there. Ma- Madeline Page was there one year as a headliner. And um, I remember playing there and we were, I think we were headlining this year. I can't remember um, or that night at least. And the crowd, there was quite a few people in the crowd. There's, you know, probably four or 500 at least, maybe more. It's kind of hard to tell when you're in a big, like, open parking lot. Yeah. You know, instead of, like, an enclosed space. But there, there was a lot of people spread out. And we uh, we were playing. And as it got later in the night, the college kids came out, which was getting rowdy and stuff, you know, getting really into it. And we played um, Pour Some Sugar on Me, right? And we, the, our lead single had an idea of getting a bucket full of cash like okay. just dollar bills and pouring it on the crowd so he he went i he went to the bank and just got a ton of dollar bills and then during the the, the bridge you know when the solos happened he goes and pours all this cash in the crowd and they went crazy about dollars right it was funny people were trying to jump over the barriers we had and stuff <laughs> and um right before uh, right after that then i went and i jumped off the stage it was pretty far down and i started playing like with people and they were going crazy they almost pulled me over the barrier though <laughs> so the crowd i was like oh crap because they were just getting rowdy and yeah. there was a couple buddies of mine from college like old roommates and stuff that one of them he was pretty pretty drunk i'm yeah. pretty sure but uh, it was just he was excited to see me you know because it had been like a year since we've seen each other and stuff he was just like oh yeah i didn't know and people were grabbing money off the floor. And I just remember, like, that was a good experience, right, though? Like, everyone loved it. You know, they're in, they're already having a good time. So yeah. that was just adding fuel to their energy, right? But I've also done that in bar gigs where people are, like, kind of just, kind of listening, kind of not, you know? And I've done that. And then, like, it, it just, like, it was just kind of awkward, you know? Like, yeah. but I just was wanting to move around a little bit, see what happened. So I, like, kind of did a, a circle around the, the room or whatever and, like, it's like it almost didn't happen, you know, yeah. and I'm like, well, <laughs> yes. I okay, know. I guess I'll just tone it down a little bit, you know, for the show, you know, but I was, you know, if you're playing a, a long show, it's like, you kind of want to experiment a little bit sometimes. And I think that's important too. Like, yeah, maybe I, pro- I, I, like I said, I want to gauge things before I do that again, but I think it's important to experiment and test things out. Yeah. It's like, because if you're not, I mean, it's like, when you improvise in a, in a song or during musically, I think you should improvise and, and try new things, you know, performance wise too. And so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. it's yeah. the practice makes better, you know, as they say, not perfect, but it does make better in my opinion. Yeah. You know, practice can get a little bit better or something a little bit better, you know, as long as you're actually practicing, not just playing something you already know how to do, you know? Yep. So true practice. That's something that the professors at Snow College would emphasize. They're like, it's not practicing if you played a C major scale the same way you have for like, you know, like maybe do it by do a C major scale in thirds, you know, you know, intervals instead of just playing like just straight, you know, the yeah. scale or or maybe try to do it in fourths. See if you can even do that. You know, that's going to work your brain a lot different, you know, and I, you know, and I think we're all guilty of that, like doing similar things like, oh, I'll do the same warm up I always do, you know, yeah. and that's not always a bad thing. Warm ups, I think, are a little different. But, I mean, you do want to practice different warm-ups as well to get your hands, you know, used to doing different things. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it, just not becoming too complacent in that fashion, I guess. So. 100%, yeah. But, anyways, well, we, we've talked for a while. So, um, I appreciate you coming and being on the show, Alec. Yeah. Um, and, again, you are a musician, guitarist, and a music major at uh, Utah Valley University. And when do you graduate from um, I've still got a couple of years. I've been taking it pretty slow. Okay. Um, so that's uh, TBD. TBD. But, uh, um, yeah. I'm, uh, that's what I do. Okay, cool. Well, you'll probably be seeing more from him. Um, if you, Do you have any socials you want to? Yeah. Um, so I have an Instagram. I, have, I don't do much with it yet, but I'm planning to. It's uh, um, at music by Tambo. My last name's Tambo. And, um, yeah, hopefully – sometime within the next few months I've, I've been writing stuff i've been recording some rough drafts of things 
Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll be releasing some stuff too because I'm I'm also a songwriter and, and pretend to sing. So <laughs> that's what I think of myself as like a songer that happens to play guitar that happens to sing as I because I need to you know kind of a thing yeah. as a tool. But I don't think of myself as a guitar player really or even a singer. So I think my even though I have guitar card, guitars are all in here. It's like I'm a songwriter that plays guitar so I can write songs. Yeah, you know. But well, this was a good discussion. I appreciate having you on the show. Um, and everyone that's listening, uh, I hope this was enjoyable for you. Uh, there will be future episodes every Friday. They'll be released. And until next time, guys, keep rocking on.